Hello and welcome to The Gist. I'm your host, Chris Vetrano, here to break down all the things that are happening in pop culture and interviewing the people that make it pop. And it's been a minute since we've dipped into and dived deep on all things Bravo. So today I'm bringing a real expert to the podcast. And you might be thinking, well, Chris, aren't you an expert? Because we have talked about it a lot, but no. Because today I have one half of one of the most well-respected and popular podcast shows that focus on all things Bravo and reality TV. And today he's here to share all of his expert thoughts on Housewives, Bravo culture, and so much more. Let's not waste any more time. Please welcome to The Gist from Watch What Crap Ends, Ben Mandelker. Hey, Ben. Hey, Chris. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. I'm so excited to chat with you. I'm a fan of the podcast. Obviously, I feel like any Bravo fan is going to be a fan of Watch What Crap Ends and knows it well. Um, You guys are really like leading the way for the Bravo fans out there. Thanks so much. I, I hope I hope Bravo fans are listening to us. If you're not, well, hey, it's never too late to start. I'm always gonna I'm always gonna try to like find some new listeners wherever I can. I'm I'm shameless about it. Yeah, well, and you've got to be. I mean, there's a lot of competition out there. I I want to get your thoughts because Bravo the Bravo sort of culture has changed so much, especially with podcasts and social media. It's really changed the way that people watch and engage with these shows. And have you felt that being kind of on one of these really popular podcast platforms that the fans are much more a part of sort of even the storylines on these shows ever since you've yeah. gotten started? Oh, totally. Because when we started in 2012, uh, a lot of these shows uh, were really maintaining the the idea that we were flies on a wall watching like, the, oh, this is really how women in Orange County behave. Like we're right. like, this is this is what they do. Right. And all the drama came from their lives there. But the shows have become increasingly more meta, you know, as the re- as things that happen on the reunion start to affect the next season because like reunions reunions are kind of like an alternate timeline from what we see like mm-hmm. and at a reunion they're reflecting on what they saw and what they what they went through so it, it should seem like what happens at the reunion like we should just go back to like oh these are just people living their lives but now yeah. the show's getting more and more meta as it deals with that and then a lot of stuff that happens on social media pertains to it it's all the way to the point where you have on real house of salt lake city this is sort of a spoiler to anyone who's not watched the latest season. And so I highly recommend, <laughs> yeah. you know, you've been warned, but on Salt Lake City, the most recent season, yeah. the cast member, the big twist is revealed that she was an internet troll. Like yeah. she was in, she was on Instagram trolling the cast and then she became a cast member. So yeah. like the role of the fans has become like, like very, very impactful. Yeah. Well, and on Jersey, we just saw it too. There's, there was part of, and it's kind of, it happened less on the show than I thought it actually was. It was sort of skated by, but the fact that, you know, bloggers and these social media accounts are starting to be fed various storylines and behind the scenes tips to share um, on the platforms so that it helps sort of their narrative that they want to create on the show. So it's definitely becoming this like completely different animal. It is, and, and and people are more aware than ever before of how they're being received and how they're doing with the fans, the audience. Like, I think if you went back to two thousand nine, two thousand ten, I don't think like there was probably was some awareness of how you know how some of the women on at that time. I think it was only just OC, New York, and Atlanta, right. but there was some awareness of like how they were coming off. But now they're really, really aware, and they really yeah. care about that. And then the shows themselves have really broken the fourth wall a lot. You know, we yeah. now see camera crews. We now we now hear producers asking questions. We now have like really meta moments, like the fact that Denise um, Denise Richards was on there going Bravo, Bravo, fucking Bravo, and she says right. it because she thinks it means they're not going to be able to use the footage, and Bravo right. uses it anyway, <laughs> acknowledging that like, oh, she thought she was going to stop us from you know rolling the cameras, but we are. And we had on Summer House, which is not Real Housewives, but on Summer House. There was a scene this last season where Carl is talking about, you know, the cameras and how it affects his relationship with Lindsay. And they show a wide shot of him with the cameras. So it's like everything is becoming super, super self-aware and meta. And I think that's actually a great thing because it needs it. It needs it. But also like the audiences are super savvy. We all know how these shows are made. We, We understand like what's happening here. So don't fool us into thinking like, you know, 
like awareness of the cameras is not a consideration by yeah. by sort of breaking that fourth wall and acknowledging moments like that. It's yeah. it's also acknowledging that we as viewers are capable of of watch of seeing something like that and it's not ruined for us. Yeah, I think, and I think we saw that too on Vanderpump Rules in that season finale sort of moment where you know Lala breaks annou- like announces that she's going to break the fourth wall, breaks the fourth wall, and I think everyone thought they were going to like pull one over on Ariana and kind of make it look bad, mm-hmm. but really I think it that backfired because as you just mentioned the audience is smart and we want to see that we don't really want to see a sit down between Ariana or Ariana and Sandoval. Because we know that that's not going to be real. That's not going to be authentic. Right. And so we'd rather see her be like, no, and go tell producers, like, I'm out of here because I'm not going to film this. Like, this isn't what I signed up for. And exactly. that, just, that makes for better TV. So it's interesting. But um, take me back a little bit because you mentioned 2012, which is, you know, am- amazing, incredible. You've been doing this for a long time. Um, but give me kind of, you know, give me the gist on uh, Watch What Crap Ends and kind of how did it come to be? How did you guys sort of get started in this sort of space and loving Bravo? Well, Ronnie and I, uh, Ronnie is my co-host and mm-hmm. we both came from the world of TV blogging in the aughts. Um, I had a blog called TV Gasm. He started writing for it. And then I started doing my own blog and he was doing TV Gasm and he did his, we were just were constantly writing about reality TV in the blogosphere. Yeah. And because of that, I wound up actually being invited to host a web show called Housewife Hoedown. Amazing. Last, yeah, it lasted like a year. <laughs> It was on what was the name of that platform? It was called like you. It was like YouTube. Have you ever heard of YouTube? No, <laughs> yeah, um, you it was. It's called like UStream, I think. Oh yeah, UStream. Yeah. Remember UStream? Yeah. And so yeah. there was this company. It was a startup that was going to have like different, you know, like little pieces of content on UStream. Right. So I was hired to be a host of Housewife Hoedown, where we talk about Real Housewives every week. And Amazing. my job was to bring on people. So I was like, well, I'm going to bring on Ronnie. To, as, a, as my guest because he's funny he knows this world and yeah. we had great chemistry it was super fun and i rotated through a whole bunch of people also my friend matt whitfield invited <laughs> him on he was really good then the three of us are doing it together great the chemistry was just was really good right fast forward a year later the the network goes like the the company shutters so mm-hmm. we were like well that was really fun why don't we try our hand at podcasting? At that point, yeah. I had already been like dabbling in it a little bit, you know, because it's a lot easier to talk than to write sometimes. Absolutely. So we're like, let's try podcasting. So the three of us started Watch What Happens in 2012. After about a year, Matt went off. He at the time was uh, an editor at Yahoo Entertainment, I believe. So he had actual professional opportunities to pursue. Mm-hmm. And the podcast, our podcast was just like nothing. It was just like, We were just talking about Real Housewives. I think there was only Real Housewives and Vanderpump Rules. Vanderpump Rules was around at that time. Right. We talked about it like once a week. It was like a big nothing. But (laughs) we, you know, we were lucky because we built on our blogging audiences. And um, and then Serial came along and mainstreamed podcasts. And suddenly, like everyone had a podcast, and we were benefiting from people talking about us on other podcasts. And sudden we were just in the right place at the right time. And then our show just kind of took off. Yeah. And it certainly has. And actually you mentioned, um, people mentioning your, uh, your podcast last, our, our last episode, uh, with Maggie Rose, um, a a local singer in Nashville, or or she's not a local singer. She's a, a nationwide, a national singer, but, uh, Maggie Rose, she was on as my guest, um, and she's a big fan and she brought it up. Really? She was talking about watch what crap ends and she was like, Oh yeah. She's like, uh, Ben, I sometimes like flirt with him in the DMS and you know, Oh my she- goodness, Maggie, I, <laughs> that's so cool. I have to yeah. connect. I didn't connect those dots. Okay. Maggie yeah. Rose, I'm going to look her up. I'm going to flirt with her back, even though I'm gay and I have a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She, um, she's also married. So, but, um, Perfect. <laughs> but yeah, she was saying like, Oh, she's like, do you listen? She's like, I love Bravo. And, Um, Hopefully she's not listening at this point because she is currently catching up on Salt Lake City and we talked about it and she has no idea. I was like, I don't know how you've managed to stay away from what happened in the last season. Yeah, that was that was a nationwide zeitgeisty thing that happened. Yeah, she's like, I don't know either. I've just sort of like 
I'm refusing to look at various things or listen to things about it. And she's like, but she's loving it. So she's getting caught up. And um, so hopefully she uh, turned it off before the spoiler alert. But yeah, but yeah people just people absolutely love it. And you guys are so funny and the way that you talk about it and you really just bring sort of you bring the humor, which I think, Thank is you. you know, we talk a, a little bit about how the audience has gotten so involved and especially Jersey, like mm. it just the internet becomes a really unsafe place. It's like when you say something bad about Taylor Swift and the Swifties attack you, like, yeah, it's like, don't careful. say anything about Teresa. Don't say anything about like which team you're on in mm-hmm. Jersey. It's like you, people are getting canceled. It feels oh. like on internet. Can you imagine on- getting canceled over real housewives of New Jersey. Like that's <laughs> the hill that you wind up getting canceling over. I mean, it's interesting. I did Melissa Gorgo's podcast a few weeks ago and she was yeah. super nice. And so they posted some asset. They posted some parts of it on the, on, uh, um, on Instagram. And so they did the thing where they like invited me to be a collaborator. So it's basically, there are some posts that are up there that are like Ben Mandelker and Melissa Gorga, which by the way, I never would have thought 10 years ago that would have happened, but <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. But as a result, anytime someone leaves a comment on her posts, like I get, I see it in my notifications. It's like they're leaving a comment. They're not leaving comments for me, really. They're leaving it for her. And they are so mean. I mean, people <laughs> are just like tearing her apart. I I, like every day, every day, it's like, well, the show sucks because of you. Well, why don't you Ugh. fix your hair? Your nose looks stupid. You know, it's like, it's it's Ugh. wild. It's wild how toxic it is out there, especially around New Jersey. Yeah. And I mean, I feel that way a little bit about all the Bravo shows. I, I feel, and for me, the turning point I feel like was BravoCon. I feel like when they introduced BravoCon, it was kind of the first time that like the fans really felt ownership of the Bravo content. Mm. And I start, I mean, you know, we, you, I'm sure you've seen the clips or been there when it happened where, I mean, fans are asking like really mean spirited questions to these people on stage. Yeah. And it's like, you wouldn't go to any other convention and, you know, bash somebody live in that kind of setting. And we've sort of like encouraged it and become this strange culture. So it, it feels you know, like part a little of that, bit of a balance. Part of that speaks to social media. I mean, part of it yeah. is speaks to people trying to have a moment that goes viral. Yeah, And that's kind of like a sad state of affairs. And I, I'm sort of, I'm of the mindset of like, let's find like, let's find the comedy in these shows. I mean, anytime, I mean, watch what happens. We have so many episodes where we whip ourselves into a rage. We get so mad. And those are my least favorite episodes. My least yeah. favorite episodes is when we are ranting and calling people out for their shit instead yeah. of just seeing like cracking up at the hilarity. I mean, it's important. It's important. You do want to call people out, you yeah. know, and be like, Oh, shut up, you know, <laughs> but like sometimes we'll end an episode and I will feel like, wow, I think I spent m- way too much time sort of teetering over into that space of internet troll rather than being in the space of someone who's like loves this show and is roasting it and having fun. And like, I'm always trying aspiring to stay in the fun place Right. Um, as opposed to the ranty place, because I just don't think it's a good look. I don't think it's a good look for anyone to 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 be really, really nasty about these shows. Because also, these are like just Bravo shows. Like how, like, yeah. like you put this energy to something more productive, you know? Yeah. But that being said, I can't act like I can, I don't fall into it. Like I definitely am guilty of, of of being like that as well. Oh, totally. I mean, I'm I'm blocked by several housewives. So oh, I know I, I, I know I know that I can also be a part of that, but. It is. It's just wild how it's taken off, and I, I I see such a small portion of that sort of online hate or you know reactions to things that I said, or even like if I said something and I you know referenced you know season three and it was actually season five that that thing happened. Oh, yeah. It's like someone's correcting me, and so I have to imagine like you guys are also getting you know those things in the comments. We get a lot of love, actually. We have a That's really awesome. supportive you know group of listeners. I mean, uh, like. You know, every now and then there'll be some some comment that'll be nasty. But yeah. like by and large, they're all really nice. And yeah. I've also gotten to the place, I'm like really proud. I've gotten to the place where very few negative comments get under my skin anymore. Like they, I felt like when I'd get a negative comment, I felt like I had to address it mm-hmm. or I had to explain or like come to a common ground with that person or like, oh, they're mad at me, <laughs> but let me like make them like me again or whatever. Yeah. I just don't, I don't care anymore. I just feel like fine. You needed to get that off your chest. This, this meant more to you than it meant for me right now. So like, yeah. go, go for it. Maybe if I had like a landslide of them, it, I would be singing a different tune and I'm like very hashtag blessed that right now my life 
I don't get too much hate. The only time it's hard is when I feel like there is a, a, a misperception about what I said mm-hmm. and people are angry at me because of that. Like if right. someone said like, how could you do that? Like you don't stand up for women or if that's, if someone said mm-hmm. that, yeah. I would be like, then that's something that would get under my skin in a way that I'd be like embarrassed because I'm like, Oh my right. God, I, I, I said something in a way that does not convey my true thoughts. And now people have this incorrect view of what I said. And now I just have to like wait until the next episode to be able to clarify it. Like that's a frustrating space to be in, mm-hmm. but it also is a good space to be in because then it like every time something like that happens, it forces you to be like sharper and more intentional about your words. Like you really can't be, you can't be uh, careless with what you yeah. say. And a lot of times also it causes some course correction too. So they're like learnable moments, mm-hmm. but yeah, trolls, trolls are going to troll. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, well, I want to talk to you because, uh, we have, I feel like there's an energy right now with Bravo content. We're about to enter sort of this fall lineup that I, that I'm feeling is going to be very strong. So I kind of want to get your thoughts about what's to come on Bravo, because I think, you know, I've heard a lot about like, there's been a bit of a lull and things got so dark on some of the, the, uh, cities and, you know, obviously Jersey was just kind of like a firestorm. We didn't even get a reunion. It's like, we're kind of retooling some things it feels like over on Bravo, but suddenly I, I'm starting to see these trailers and some of this stuff mm-hmm. coming that just feels interesting and good. And so I want to get your thoughts, um, starting with, I think the first one we're getting, which is Salt Lake city, um, right. in this new season, we just got the trailer. Tell me your thoughts. What are you looking forward to? What are your thoughts about the trailer? trailer trailer looks good i mean this cast always brings drama they 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 they're like a late era um housewives show Mm -hmm. so they they are pretty savvy about how to provide good content for the camera the question is at five seasons in are we going to start to see some signs of self-producing and given that there's Mm -hmm. that it's always been there and we do see signs of it already but like is it going to start to teeter over into that place where it's starting to become less authentic or are they just going to keep on riding the roller coaster? It would have been fun for Monica to come back because she was so chaotic and such a firebrand and, you know, lit the, sh- lit the show up. But uh, I understand why they couldn't and they probably should not have brought her back. So it's probably the, the right decision. And truthfully, if she had come back, I can also see it having been like maybe a letdown season because a lot of it would have been like conciliatory and right. like feuding and it kind of, you know, no one likes that. So I think Salt Lake City will be good. I'll, I'll, in the beginning of the trailer, there's kind of like this voiceover, what seems like it's between Whitney and Heather, where Heather says like, you reached out to our sworn enemy. Yes. It, do we feel like that's Monica? It's, like It's got to be. It's definitely not Jen Shaw. There were rumors that Monica and Whitney had some sort of lunch around BravoCon or something like that. So I think it's that Heather is, Heather is really Um, (laughs) anti-Monica. She, I don't think anyone who associates with Monica, she is angry. She got angry at us at our podcast because every year we do, um, we do our award show called the crappies where we give out awards. You know, it's like MTV movie awards, except for Bravo, you know, and we have like, best villain best newbie things like that and we nominated monica as best newbie and she was heather was not happy about that she was like you don't understand this woman has it's so much worse than what you see on tv and she's made our lives hell and you can't just give her a platform just by saying she's best newbie i felt like that was an overreaction but i understand why she you know why she was annoyed and i think that she just really really hates monica and she probably hates that monica was so was a troll her. and then actually people loved her for it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really did come across that way. And it felt like actually the Monica of it all almost brought like Heather and Lisa together, mm-hmm. uh, especially at the reunion. Like they went in just ready to not let her yeah. have her side of the story, tell any kind of like, you know, excuses as to what potentially like led to this account. And so yeah, Heather definitely seemed to kind of lead the way on that. So I was curious. I was like, I wonder if we're going to see any kind of like phone call or anything with Monica that's going to lead to this sort of what seems like an explosive fight with Heather. Right. Yeah. Um, and then so and then we're also uh, about to get the new Roni, uh, mm-hmm. 
which will be season two for this new bunch of ladies. What do you feel about these ladies? I know this is another sort of internet feud of like, are we going for OGs or how do we feel about the new school? Where do you stand on that? I think the new the new school is pretty much a snooze fest. Okay. You know, when it when it launched, there were all these people who were like, love it. Oh my God. Like it's like instant iconic. Like Bravo did it right. And I was like, <laughs> really? Why are people how are people feeling this way? It's so it's so dull. It's so uninteresting. And then I feel like as the season went on, more people started to be like, guys, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I think that like people start to feel more comfortable saying it's not that good. It's boring. Yeah. But that being said, there were bright spots in, the, in that season. I think Jessel was a mm-hmm. great find. Jessel yeah. is of the school of um, total lack of awareness. Mm-hmm. And I love that, especially my Roni. I love a wealthy, unaware person yeah. um, in New York. Yeah, which uh, but I want to say she went to the school of Ramona in a lot of ways. She but did, maybe less problematic, but she is very much kind of that Ramona, like Ramona Dorit. She's in that space, so yeah. like she's hilarious, and the way she got under everyone's skins, the way she, the, mm-hmm. like the rest of the cast couldn't was so frustrated with her, and I, I think the way the rest of the cast seemed to be confused as to how Jessel became the breakout star from the show is, mm-hmm. I think, great because I felt like honestly, I'm not very interested in a, at a housewife show that's going to dazzle us with fashion. I've just right. not like, right. I like, it's fun to see it. And you're like, Oh my God, that's amazing. But like, if the tone of the show is just like, look at these fabulous women, don't you want to be their best friends? That's not the show that I'm interested in. I right. want to see people who are acting impolite in society. And I can wonder <laughs> how can these people be so wealthy mm-hmm. that they think that this is proper behavior. And that's what right. old school Roni gave us. Um, yep. So new school Roni, not so not so into it. I mean, I love Jenna Lyons. I loved her reality show that she had on HBO, uh, yeah. which I forget what it's called, but it was really good. I still enjoy her as someone who's such a different type of real housewife who doesn't seem to know what's going on. I like that. Bryn has upside, yeah. but I think it's rough. I'm hoping season two will be better now that they've had a, a season under their belts. I, I mean, I have to, I'm, I'm holding out hope because I feel like Bravo has done us right in the past. And I was surprised that all of them came back because I, I like you, you know, Jessel, I thought was the breakout. I see like that Bryn had potential. Like if you put Bryn in a scenario with some of our old OG women, like I think that she could have been really fun. She could have been a Sonia, you know, she kind of brings that light energy, but I was just surprised that all of them came back so I'm like, yeah. well, there must be something there or or it's going to crash and burn. But the, tr- the trailer looks interesting. So I, I'm, it was, I'm compelled. It was a better trailer than the last trailer. Yeah. Um, and like like Sai, I just think that Sai is deeply uninteresting. But maybe she will blossom in this season. Yeah. I, I'm like, it's amazing what a season two can do for a show. Like I thought season one of Dubai was almost unwatchable. Yeah, and season two has been that. like a delight. Like it's, yeah. it's been a lo- It's been a super fun show. So sometimes it's a matter of cast members getting their act together and being like, okay, this is what we have to really do. Sometimes yeah. it's about production. It's about the, the showrunner. but fingers crossed that we get a, a really strong second season. Yeah. I I was going to actually ask you your thoughts on Dubai because I felt the same way. I felt like, and I like, I kind of compared it to that last season of Roni being like, these women didn't like bring it. We were all so excited for Jenna Lyons. And I feel like in the same way, we were really excited for Caroline Stanberry to be back on our TV. Yeah. And then like, she didn't deliver. And it was like, wait, why are you really She boring? was like a flop. Yeah. yeah. She and was just then, complaining, didn't seem to want to do anything. And and the whole show was very listless. It was like no pulse to it. Yeah. But this season, I am keep trying, like I've got friends and stuff, obviously, that are obsessed with most of the Bravo shows. And for some reason, they're like, yeah, I don't know if du- Dubai is for me. And I'm like, just give it a chance in season two, because it's actually like, it brings me back to old school housewives where the the pettiness is like more fun. It's like, I'm having yeah. like a good time watching it. Like I actually find comedy in it. And it's you know, very that's funny. That I feel like has been missing. And Caroline is back to being the Caroline Stanbury that we enjoy. She just yes. like dismissive and cold and yes. it's hard. You know, th- it speaks to how important it is to come out the gate swinging, like uh, shows like Dallas, Miami, Dubai, 
they all had kind of creaky first seasons. Actually, Potomac too. But Potomac mm-hmm. has such a good cast that eventually, and they had such they sort of way. major scandals coming out of it, they found the vibe. But all those shows had mediocre first seasons, and then they all had actually excellent second seasons. Like mm-hmm. Miami season two is fantastic. Right. Um, but and Dallas season two is just like amazing. Like Dallas season two, Miami season two, two of the best seasons that I've ever been on Bravo. But once people have been like, eh, I watched, it. I didn't really like it. It's really hard to get people to come back. They've got a lot of TV shows to watch out in the world, yeah. and they're not gonna go revisit something they didn't like the first time around. Yeah. I um yeah, I I'm I'm you're I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to go back and watch some of I loved Dallas like in the early, and then I do think it kind of fell apart. And uh, Miami, I completely agree with you. I think that there's, um, and they've found their way back. I'm curious mm-hmm. if we're going to find our way back to Dallas at some point as well. And, and I feel like weirdly we might, because Dallas, so honestly, Dallas was really good. And they got, there were three things that hurt Dallas. The Obviously the big one, Leanne Locken, she, you know, the things she was saying about Carrie were, were really unacceptable and yeah. she was given chances to smooth it over and she just kept on messing it up. And so yeah. that left people with a bad taste in their mouth. Followed up late, a year later with um, Cameron Westcott and her husband and brother-in-law talking about Tiffany Moon. Like, mm-hmm. So those problematic elements, especially at that time in our country, yeah. that was just not going to work. Um, especially because honestly, those were the two of the biggest and funniest characters on the show. And then the other thing is, I, I think that Carrie, uh, uh, what was her name? Britting, Brittingham or whatever. Car- the, the new uh, Carrie, there was Carrie Duber and then the new Carrie. She was terrible. She was oh, awful. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, so I, she just was, she just kind of like sucked and she took up a lot of real estate on the show and that did. kind of dra- dragged it down because Deandra was great. Mama D hilarious. Amazing. You know, there was a lot of good stuff going on for that show. They really, they, they should bring it back. Yeah, I think, they, and I feel like they may, especially with Jersey kind of up in the air and the future there. I think like we've been asking for it. I feel like we're ripe for it. So I'm, I'm. Sometimes that's good to have like a little bit of time. Did they put it in the vault? The, did they do that Bravo vault with it? Or was that, that was DC that they put, put in the, they did right. in the, the vault. And then now, now all of a sudden everyone's like, DC is actually really good. And it's like, yeah, we, we could have told you that we watched the first season yeah. of DC. It was really good. <laughs> yeah. I was really bummed when that didn't come back. And I know as was the cast, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so some other things that we have coming up, uh, we have Beverly Hills. There's a new dating show with, uh, some of the housewives that are going to be on it. Right. And then Dorinda's getting her own kind of show um, in the Berkshires. Is that going to be on Bravo? Do we know that the that's a Bravo show or is it? It's I, sort I of mean, like Vanderpump Villa, but with Dorinda. And if it's like, if it, but if it's not on Bravo, I don't know. It makes me scared because Band, Vanderpump Villa is awful. Yeah. I, I, I have a note actually. I wanted to get your thoughts on the Villa. Um, I, I don't know about Ber- Dorinda's, I thought that it was part of a Bravo announcement. I, I thought it was like in a grouping with some of these things that she was working on that with Bravo or at at minimum Peacock, which given that Dorinda is going to be on the upcoming traders, I feel like that's like a natural, like similar to kind of Keep. after traders that the everybody, the viewers wanted Phaedra back. And I feel right. like maybe this is their answer to say like, we got to put Dorinda on something so that we are delivering when traders is over. So that's my gut there. But, but Vanderpump Villa, yes, was horrible. I was shocked not, that I watched it. Yeah. And not even like horrible. And like, this is so bad. I have to like revel in it. It was just, I felt like it was insulting to my time. I was like, I actually felt insulted by the show. I was like, why are you doing this? Why, wh- like, why do we have to watch this? What, like, why are you, why, why producers are you being so lazy with this show that you've made? Like, this yeah. is just awful. Cause you know, you're, they know they're going for the Bravo audience. It's Lisa Vanderbilt. They know who they're bringing over. And the fact that they are like, okay, we're going to bring you over, but we're going to give you a schlocky show that you would never, that would never ever be on Bravo. Which, I was just like, I was really upset by it. And it had um, like this potential. Like when I first, I think the first episode, I didn't think that I was like, wow, this cast is feels really wrong. It's It feels like a bunch of models that 
did a casting tape and then showed up at this like fake villa that's not even really like a Lisa it's Vanderpump a, property property. Yeah. The whole thing was artificial. But I liked that it was sort of a, a blend of Vanderpump rules with like below deck. And I feel like that's what they were kind of trying to to do with it. And I said, okay, there might be something here. And we got nothing. And now I thought for sure I will never see any of those people again. And now Stassi is joining season two and I'm so perplexed. I don't know what's going on. It's like, it's like, I want to sample it to see how it is with Stassi. I think that's a good choice to bring Stassi in, but ultimately it's the same producers. So it's going to be the same bad show. And, and what I was, what I was struck by was how you could just, see you could just see the spit and the tape that they put the show together with like you like like again going back to what we were saying before audiences are more savvy than ever before and bravo acknowledges that and keeps up with it and has adjusted their vibe to match that and this was like a bad show on e that aired in 2007 i mean when they're like pretending to get drunk behind us it's like oh lisa vanderpump comes in and says whatever you do, you cannot drink on the job. And then she leaves and they like pick up the bottles and they do these big animated, like, like guzzling booze yeah. guzzlings. And like, it was so obviously scripted. And and like, I know that these shows, all the shows have elements of producer manipulation, scripting, et cetera. But like the, the way that they were so lazy in presenting it to us, I didn't even try to make it seem like this was something real. There would be some moments where there were some sparks of conflict, but it was, I was just like, I literally was insulted as a viewer. I, I'm like, I'm, I, you see me getting mad at just on the heels of me saying how ranting I, I get, I'm, I have less fun ranting about something than I do poking fun at it or enjoying the comedy in it. But I do think I do have a lot of fun ranting at an actual TV show versus a person because a TV show is the culmination of um, many people's ideas of what they think is a good idea. (laughs) And as opposed to a person who's just like, you know, deeply flawed. Yeah. It's, it it was, it was really wild. And, and Stassi's return to television almost feels as artificial as that show was too, because she's come out and said, I don't want to do like when the Valley was coming out and that she had been approached about it and things. And like, she was like, I don't want to do reality TV. And then to flip it to not only join Vanderpump Villa, which yeah makes no sense, but also then she's getting her own reality series out of it as well, which I feel like was part of the deal with Hulu. Yeah. And I think that's the only thing is they, she asked for a salary and they're like, we don't can't give you that for Villa. So we'll, we'll give you the salary, but you'll have to do two shows of content for us. Well, it's amazing what a, what a, you know, name the price and people will change their minds, you know, yeah. and, or maybe she just was like, I don't want to do reality TV because, you know, she's been doing reality TV since she was a kid. And yeah. then she realized, you know what, why am I trying to fight against what is my ministry in life, which is reality TV? Yeah. So in like on a scale of one to 10, where do you feel like Bravo is today in terms of sort of like entertainment value? Because a lot of people are saying it doesn't have what it used to have. It was like in its heyday, had some of the most engaging, most like incredible episodes of television. And people are a little worried about the future of it. Where do you sort of sit on that sort of scale? I don't know what TV network those people are watching. I mean... (laughs) Did we not just sit here and talk about Salt Lake City? Do yeah. like did we not watch Summer House and and were we not totally fascinated by Carl and Lindsay's relationship falling apart at the seams? Were we not totally caught up as a nation in Scandaval? We the Bravo continues to churn out lots of great TV. Mm-hmm. Um I think that maybe because this summer there's just not been a lot of there haven't been a lot of TV shows. It's been right. Dubai, New Jersey, and Below Deck Med. And then mm-hmm. Orange County only recently started, although they're like on six episodes by now. But like, I feel like Orange County being tucked away on Thursday is sort of like, it's it's strange. not, it is strange. It's such a good season. And like Thursday is also normally like their, that's like their summer house and Southern Charm night. I just, it, I feel like, I don't know, like they're missing out on their chatter, like the the normal chatter that, that, like that it would get if it were on a Sunday night. So I don't know. People, people are always saying this. People are always saying Bravo's not like it's not good anymore. But the truth is that Bravo, 
I think Bravo may be better than it ever has been. You know, yeah. the only real stinkers that we've seen in my mind over the past year have been Atlanta and Potomac. For yeah. some reason, those two shows just they just were disasters. Um, but all the other shows have been. Did you like really this great. last season of Jersey? I did. I did like did. it. Yeah. I think despite the fact that it was like a mess, I did find it to be really entertaining. Yeah, um, I did too. So uh, I don't think it was a disaster, but you know, obviously things have to change there. Yeah. I mean, I think that like, I almost enjoyed it more that they weren't being forced to be in the same place. And then you have the same, like everyone shooting each other looks and them trying to force some kind of conversation that ends up erupting. Like, it's like, we've been there. So I, I actually felt the same. I felt like Jersey was really strong, but I know that a lot of people have said like, it's got nothing left and, and, you know, and I, I think maybe part of it too is just we're never going to be satisfied because I feel like every time a Bravo trailer comes out, I see all these, you know, tweets and, and various uh, posts like, Oh, they've got nothing. I feel like mm-hmm. that's like a Bravo fans. Like favorite thing to say is they've got nothing. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, or what, why do we think they've got nothing? I just watched, like I saw that on the Salt Lake city and someone told me that. And I said, well, then I think you need to go rewatch it. I was like, Lisa at one point stands up and almost rips a wig off of Whitney's right. head. And like, that looks incredible. <laughs> like, I want to exactly. watch that. No, people, you know, unfortunately, Bravo fans are incredibly fickle. And, yeah. um, you know, someone has a season where they're like, eh, only okay. And everyone's like, fire them. Like, yeah. oh, I didn't like that. Fire them. And like, no, they don't deserve to be fired. Like yeah. They just didn't have as compelling of a season as someone else. They, that doesn't mean they're, they need to be fired. There are some times where a show, it's clear it needs to be retooled. Like uh, Atlanta has been ailing for several years. That needed to be retooled. And then Potomac, I'm surprised that they didn't do more retooling with Potomac. And I'm surprised that it's coming back so quickly. That's also coming back this fall. Yeah. But um, uh, like uh, there is sometimes uh, an element of throwing the baby out with the bat- the bathwater, and sometimes I just want people to be like a little bit more patient. Yeah. And um, sometimes a show, sometimes a show like needs to kind of get its sea legs if it's not like absolutely amazing right out the gate. You know, like that's okay too. But but yeah, mm-hmm. people are people just love love being down on things. People love predicting things. People love being right about something, and it's right. just easier to pre- like the odds are. There's a greater chance for failure than greatness, so people take those chances. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, I um, and you mentioned that Potomac's. You're surprised it's coming. I think that is one of the reasons that this last, you know, the summer or um, the spring felt a little bit of a lull. Is I really think that Bravo realized, like, because of how the fandom is and because of social media and how engaged the the viewers are that they actually did retool some of their timelines and they're turning these seasons around a lot faster. Like OC, I felt like we were hearing about, you know, the Ryan stuff that's breaking and like the trailers dropping within a matter of weeks or, you know, whatever. And so it's like, you're seeing it, you know, that they picked cameras back up and in an old school days, we wouldn't see that season. And I think that's also why you mentioned uh, Southern charm and summer house being like reserved on Thursdays is I, they, got rid of winter house and i think that they realize like they the way that these casts interact and they're so social and now those shows are kind of intertwined in various ways especially with craig and Paige, like that they have to turn these seasons around kind of almost real time because yeah. as things are happening they're we're we already know about them and mm-hmm. so I, I feel like there is a chance that like this fall and this winter, we are going to start seeing like these shows return and it's going to feel fresh again. And so I'm, I'm feeling really hopeful about yeah. where we're going. I also have to imagine that like there, there were a bunch of shows that they need to retool. Like they, again, they're now, they now have to retool Jersey. So that's going to be probably at a, at a more extended timeline. Right. Um, Potomac, Atlanta, they've got to work on some of these shows and I'm okay with that. Like I, there's so many Bravo shows. I don't think we need them all on all at once. I actually mm-hmm. like the build up. It's like, if something, if it takes like a year and a half for something to come back, like that's okay. It just, whatever you come back with, make sure it's good. And right. like, so when they said Vanderpump rules is taking a break this summer, I was like, do it, yeah. do it. Because like get ahead of it. Like I actually really loved this last season, even though a lot of people did not like it. I thought it was actually yeah. an excellent season. And um, because 
what other show would be able to spend a season grappling with the question of what do you do when someone in your friend group is the most hated person in America? Like right. that is amazing to me. Yeah. And so I think people want that high drama, but I was like, no, this is such an amazing existential question. Like I was fascinated the entire year, you know, the entire yeah. season. Yeah. It but, was amazing. Um, and I think that yeah, we but, also, I think we're fatigued by it as well because it was so everywhere that we needed like a break. And now that we're getting that and when it comes back, Hopefully it will feel fresh and new and we'll be ready for it. Right. Plus, by the way, the Valley, I mean, if people say that Bravo's not as good as it used to be, like the Valley was like mm -hmm. top tier Bravo work. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe how good the Valley was. I was expecting to hate it. I can't even yeah. tell you. I thought it was going to be vignettes of like shopping at like <laughs> Target and like babies and like Brittany being like, oh, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get a bonnet for my baby. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, this is, this is going to be awful. And it was some of the most compelling TV that Bravo put up this year. It was yeah. overshadowed by the fact that it was on against uh, Summer House and Vanderpump Rules, but yeah. it was it was fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely like needs to win a crappy for like the best new show because it's one of the best television shows like that have that has come out on any network in a very long time. A hundred percent. It probably was Bravo's best new show since. I don't know, at least in the last five years, right? Has any other new, I mean, Winter House was a flop. I mean, Family Karma was nice. You know, I liked but. Family Karma, um, the, but didn't compare. Uh, I would say Traders, but Traders, I think, was technically uh, peak. Yeah, Traders is probably the best reality show competition to come out since, like. They started. <laughs> like, I mean. it, like it, like it, honestly, it's not even hyperbole, you know? Like, I feel like there are certain reality competitions that, came out in the early aughts that are still with us and they're like the pillars are survivors amazing races big brothers yep. project runway top chef and traders is probably the best one since that initial class the apprentice i mean i hate to bring up i hate to invoke the apprentice but it was a it was a great reality show yeah it was great so um yeah the traders is probably the best like best one since then yeah Oh, I'm, I mean, I'm obsessed. I've seen like all the all the countries. I haven't. I need to watch the international ones. I I don't know why I haven't watched them yet. I, you know what? I'm going to. I think I'm going to give up on Big Brother. To be honest, do you okay. watch Big Brother? Are you a Big Brother watcher? I I watched like a season, or I think I watched a season of Celebrity Big Brother, like long time ago and i've just never it felt like too much of an investment so i just haven't it's like love island like i just i can't spend so that much time with the television so i can't I either like but i do and so <laughs> i big brother i have been a loyal big brother watcher since season three oh, like wow. i am very connected i feel very connected to the show you know back when i was tv blogging Mm -hmm. I made a supercut of Julie Chen saying, but first, but first, but first. It was like <laughs> yeah. one of the first supercuts that ever was out there. And so that's amazing. why they always say hashtag, but first on the show. Like that's why it became her tagline mm -hmm. is because of that video. And that's then amazing. also on the, on the blog, I would, I would refer to her as the Chen bot, which by the way, <laughs> is not something that I came up with. I read it on some random little board somewhere, but I thought it was so funny. I started saying it and then her nickname became the chen bot so like i actually you know I, I feel like i've made a an impact on the show in two ways yeah. and i feel like i can never not watch big brother but the truth is i was watching an episode I'm, I'm a few episodes behind i was watching an episode last night and the show has become relentlessly annoying and and i feel like this is a show that has not evolved and when i i you know i watched two love islands this summer i watched usa and uk i watched a lot of love island and Love Island and Big Brother are very similar shows in that casts are being recorded for 24-7. And then episodes are being churned out real time, even more real time with Love Island because they have a 24-hour turnaround. They literally yeah. – they, they churn out that stuff. It's amazing that they do it. And those shows, Love Island, for people who don't necessarily watch it, everyone thinks it's just like, a, like The Bachelor or something like that or just like people being ridiculous. But it really what it is is you're just watching people talk for an hour. And there's yeah. a narrator who moves the action line over here. This is what's happening. But it's just yeah. people talking. And that is so revolutionary because then you look at Big Brother, what Big Brother's trying to do, and they add in slide, the sound effects, the slide whistles and boings, and people shouting like, what is she doing? And you're like, <laughs> but we're all obsessed. Love Island USA was the number one show across yeah. all categories this summer. Yeah. 900 and something million minutes. That's what people want to watch. And Big Brother is still doing all this ridiculousness. I'm like, I don't know. It just... The show feels out of step. Yeah. Well, there was I another rant for you. Another rant. I tell you, I love ranting against TV shows. <laughs> I know. I love it. I, um, 
because I have actually thought about getting into Big Brother because I was like, maybe that will like feed this sort of like traitors void that I have. And so I've been thinking about it and you just convinced me like I'm not going to waste my well, energy. Well, that's the shame. That's the shame of it is that Big Brother actually has really fun and interesting gameplay. But the way CBS actually, the way CBS presents the show is just so sloppy and so lazy. And I, I think that's the thing that I'm, I'm, I'm bumping on is that I don't like lazy shows. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it. I feel like we yeah. deserve better. And when you see the traders, the traders is done so, so beautifully that scene, the, the funeral, mm. mm-hmm. this was I mean, a challenge that had really little to no impact on anything in the game yeah. <laughs> as do, yeah. none of their challenges matter. Yeah. This was purely a spectacle for spectacle sake. And I felt like when I was watching that, I was like, this show, they are caring for me at this moment. They say, yeah. we want this to be the best possible thing for you as a viewer. And I felt it. And we all felt it. Yeah. And I think, I mean, it, my plug to you for the international versions is that you actually, and maybe this will feel more like Big Brother, is that there's higher stakes because these aren't these aren't celebrities right. that are like uh, competing. Whereas like the celebrity portion of it, I cannot like, I, I can't take away the fact that it's some of the most entertaining television that like I've ever seen. And a lot of the other countries now are starting to introduce celebrity versions, I think because this one is doing so well, but the, the other, and some of the other countries had like mixed, like our first season where it was like mixed kind of reality stars. Like Hannah from below deck is on one of the, uh, I think, right. I think New Zealand. Um, but there is something about the people that they have a story as to why they need the money and why they're actually like willing to be a traitor and lie to these people and do these things that just like, it adds a whole other element that it's like, I can't take my eyes off of it. And I'm, you know, devastated that we have none of them because I raced through them all. And now I'm like, yeah. okay, I, I miss the traitors. Um, but like I said, I feel like Bravo has been feeding us other great content and, I did watch one season of Love Island UK. Which one? And I un, um I think it was seven. It, um, mm, is that with Faye? Faye, yeah, Faye was. Oh on yeah, it that, I didn't love that season. Yeah. Oh really? Okay. It was good. It was good, but like, there are better seasons for sure. I have friends that are like, you should watch this this last one of the USA. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I I'm like, well, I kind and Aaron. Um, was on the traders. From traders. So like I know Aaron and I know a little bit, obviously, cause I can't, I can't miss it. Everyone's talking about it. So I know a little bit about where it goes and people are like, you would actually still be very entertained by it. So I may, you do would be, no, it's, it's, um, Love Island USA was phenomenal and, um, it was so exciting to, to watch it and have like what felt like all of America watching along. And it yeah. felt like finally Love Island broke through in America. And that made me happy. That made yeah. me really, really happy. And it, it was like, because this was just, it was a great season of Love Island, regardless of like compared to like, it, it ranks up there to me with many of the great Love Island UK seasons. Like it's, this is probably like a top three season of all time, oh, wow. but there was, there was so much personality with these people in a way that sometimes we don't even get on UK. This may have been the best Love Island season of all time. And wow. I think, I think the we can all thank Ariana for it. I think yeah. it, it's all because of Ariana. Like, yeah. uh, not because, oh, because she was such a good host or anything like that. She did a really nice job. It was because her going over there, yeah. everyone sampled it. Everyone was like, I guess I'll check it out. I just want to see how does she, how right. is she as a host? Well, okay, I'll just yeah. check it out. And Love Island, it gets, it gets its claws in you very quickly. And, yeah. and, and the fact that it was a good, it was, for me, what I did was I sampled it, but then I went back to UK. I was like, I'll come back to USA. And then like about five days later, there was some huge dust up on the USA where I was like, the people who had stuck around were now talking about it. Mm. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go back and watch. I was like, oh, wait a second. This is so good. This is so good. I have to actually <laughs> prioritize USA over UK for the first time in the history of this. Wow. But more importantly, Ariana not only was not only did people sample because she was on there, but she made Love Island acceptable content for Bravo mm. content creators to cover. So mm. whether you're a podcast like Watch What Crappens, whether you're a meme account 
you know, all the Bravo Instagram things now, no, like no. they all went over there. It was on Peacock, Ariana's on there. So it's not Bravo at all, but it, it came under the umbrella and it goes all the way back to that fandom. The Bravo fandom is a powerful fandom. Yes. And if they seize on something, people are going to follow. Yeah. Yeah. And well, and it was almost meta for her or not almost, it was meta for, even for her to be the host because like a couple, I think it was part of the, I don't know if it was during Scandaval, but one of the reasons that they like weren't her and Tom weren't having sex is because he was like, well, all you want to do is watch Love Island all the time. And she's like, yeah, I love it. Like it's, <laughs> one, it's my favorite show. And so for her now to be the host of it and it just, it felt like full circle yeah. in this really amazing way for Bravo fans. So it makes sense. Okay. I'm, I'm in, I've got to watch it. Yeah, no, it's, it's, gr- it's great it. TV. It's great TV. And, um, it'll be interesting to see if she comes back to Vanderpump rules because, yeah. you know, Ariana's smart. I think that she always follows her meal ticket, but then not, and not in a bad way. Like she's like, this is why would I leave that money on the table? But like at the same time, I have to imagine that she's thinking like I, I've now established myself outside of Vanderpump rules. Why should I have to go back to a position where I have to sit and talk to Tom Sandoval, even yeah. no, no matter what the money I can make my money elsewhere. Cause she is the host of the number one TV show in America. Yeah. That's major. Well, and she's hosting reunions. Like she's, I mean, she's now, she's now like graduated, right? Yes. It almost might feel strange for her to be back on Vanderpump rules. That's what I was thinking too. Like I'm actually surprised at how much like the image moved because as the host of a big TV show like that, you become an authority figure. And so then to go back to being an ensemble of people who are just, you know, making their way through the San Fernando Valley and like hanging out in people's living rooms kind of un- undermines her image a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I mean, it would be like Alan Cumming deciding that he wants to compete one season on traders. It's like you, you can't mm-hmm. like, or, or going on another kind of competition house of villains or something, you know, and it would be like, wait, you're, you're the host of traders, the biggest one. Why are you over here doing this other yeah. thing? That, like, is, I don't know. You? I don't know what the next step is for her because I think that Ariana also prides authenticity and like, and I think that she respects her roots. And so yeah. she like, I can see her being like, I'm going to come back because this is, you know, this is, this is my world and I've got my sandwich shop that I have to promote. Mm-hmm. But also it's, you make a great point. It's like, you would not expect to see Jeff Probst on the amazing race. Yeah. And totally. I think that like her path now is she's host. She's host. And she is like, I'm sure we'll see her present at the Emmys. And, um, wow. I didn't even think about it, but yes, I mean, what, you know, well, or who course. knows what else, but, yeah. but I think this is her path now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then one last show that I wanted to get your, your thoughts on, cause I know that you, uh, are doing a watch what crap ends kind of bonus, uh, show over this new mom talk, uh, oh my God. Mormon moms show. I can't remember what it's called now on Hulu. The Secret but, Lives of Mormon yes. Wives. Yes. We just Wait. looked at that trailer yesterday. I think the episode came out today. I it's gonna be perfect for us. Like I it's I'm so excited for we that. We always do well with an ensemble of women. Um mm-hmm. and these are like young women. These are like twenty they look like they're twenty something mm-hmm. and they look as vapid as they can be and, and it just looks <laughs> Like they'll just be terrible people. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm, you know, I'm a little sad. We, we missed the boat on another one that would have been good for us, uh, which was, um, the NFL, the, the cowboy, uh, Oh, the cheerleaders, the, the cowboy cheerleaders, cheerleaders thing that was on, yeah. da- uh, on Netflix, which yeah. I watched and it was so funny. Like, Oh, if we could have made fun of that, but it's hard because Netflix drops all their shows all at once. And that's really hard for a show like ours because, um, it's hard for us to do like a, a binge recap situation, but is that what Hulu's doing with this? Um, yeah. Lives? So we're, but since we're okay. ahead of this one, at least got it, we're going to maybe try to figure something out, but it's hard to be like, Oh, recap that Dallas thing season. that came out. Now we're going to recap the whole season all at once. It's really difficult. Yeah. And I wish that honestly, I, w- I wish these networks would actually give us a heads up about what's coming down, down the pike. So that way we could prepare for them and, and give some more recaps. Well, and they, they should be, but, and, and I, I know that some of the Bravo accounts have like recently gotten in trouble for posting some of their screeners and some of their clips and doing things that, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and so it's like ruining it because that is the purpose for getting those screeners is so that folks can go and talk about the, and prepare their content to help promote the episodes. And now we have to sort of figure out how to, how to keep it, 
you know, a little bit more private. So, but yes, that would be amazing. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, um, the Mormon wives. I think that just looks like something I'm going to dive into and. Yeah. I think that'll be, uh, that looks like it'll be hilarious. I mean, it's been a while since we've had a young ensemble, young female ensemble show. I think the last one that we covered was Real Girlfriends in Paris, which, by the way, was an excellent show that not enough people watched. I thought it was I so didn't funny. Watch it. Uh, yeah. it was so funny in like a in a in a in a slow burn kind of way. Like there were okay. there was one actually amazing fight in it where a girl got mad at a guy and threw wine in his face and dumped a bowl of French fries on his head. <laughs> but um uh. Like it was just so funny because of what mattered to them. Like there was one girl who got an internship at um, Sonia Raquel, I think, which is like a big designer. And like she was obsessed with trying to put up uh, draperies in their showroom. She's like, I'm going to make a big splash. I'm going to put up draperies in the showroom. It'll, <laughs> I, was, I was like, is this really your arc? And there was one girl who was so lazy. She never got a proper visa and had to be – she had to go back to America. She couldn't even finish the season. It was hilarious. So would if that if you could pick one show to kind of reboot from the Bravo vaults, would that be the one? Well, no. I, as much <laughs> as I would love to, I think it has to be Gallery Girls. Gallery okay. Girls was Gallery Girls was good. The, it's, that's the cult classic. I think probably yeah. the the one hit wonders. I would say Gallery Girls, Real Girlfriends in Paris, Game of Crowns, which people don't know about, and it was. Maybe that's the one to reboot. Game of Crowns oh. was about people who competed, women who competed in the Mrs. America pageants right. uh, in Eastern Connecticut. And it was, <laughs> there were like murder threats. It was it was one of the wildest shows Bravo ever had. And I don't know why it never didn't catch on. Princesses Long Island. Okay, I don't know why is that mine. is not with us. Like That, that is, is mine for sure. I lo- like, I always say, um, what was it? NYC Prep for that. Or I loved Tabitha too. Like, I feel like those two, I'm always kind of like, but NYC Prep would never be NYC Prep because it would be a completely different cast at this point. Right. But the uh, Princesses of Long Island is like that's that concept though. Like, it seems durable. They could bring that back, and they did another Long Island show called Secrets and Wives, which was actually I thought it was hilarious because it was just Long Island women, and they had again low stakes fights. And um, Kel on Earth, Kel on Earth. Oh. I mean. Let's never forget Kelly Catrone. I know. I, I liked it. Thought that like I, it. there was like rumors that she was going to be a New York housewife at one point. Or, oh, that would have been great. And I feel like that, yeah, that should have happened. I mean, her and Jenna Lyons would have been like probably amazing mm-hmm. together. And there was um, one show that definitely went under the radar that was really great. It was called Invite Only Cabo, and uh, it deserved to have many seasons. It was a group of friends that went to Cabo and basically spent like two weeks on vacation in Cabo. It was sort of a I don't know I'm if it came to... out. It was it's it was great. It was a great show. I need to look that one up. I, that f- sounds familiar because I mean I definitely like kind of watched Bravo all the mm-hmm. time, like and still do a lot. But um, so I feel like I I probably know that one, but I'm not yeah. remembering. But I would love to see more of these like in the vaults. I just went through yeah. the My Life on the D list. I watched all of the six seasons of that did, and right did you watch you know it was actually a really good one that got two seasons and i i'm always surprised it didn't get more but um uh blood sweat and heels was really good oh yeah yeah, yeah. that was like yeah. A, just a really good solid show and it i i just i i can't believe it only got two it was like mika who was on it like she was the star of it mika she was mm-hmm. like what she was like a fine um it was i wonder one of the stars daisy died of cancer and i wonder if they just were like let's just let's just end this here and I, well and i liked during that time too that they weren't trying to make everything housewives and they weren't trying to make everything sort of the same format and i think that that they were giving us a lot of originals and then housewives just became a juggernaut that they just, yeah. like, I think we got to put more cities. And so they were just like putting all of their eggs in the housewives basket. And I think we lost a lot of these like actually good viable ideas that were, didn't mm-hmm. have to be on the housewives brand. And I think that's where a lot of those sort of one, two season, like wonders kind of went to, went to die. Yeah. Also, by the way, you know, top chef just desserts was great. And, um, mm-hmm. I think they could resurrect that because um, I think that's just like a, I think there's an even greater awareness now of of baking and yeah. you know food culture is bigger than ever before. So yeah, I think that Bravo uh, 
they've tried to get some Top Chef spinoffs off the ground, like Top Chef Amateurs or whatever. Yeah. That never really felt right. But I think that like Just Desserts would be a really good one to bring back. And also I liked – I like Top Chef Masters. I just think that it had an identity crisis in that like it was hard to know like really like what makes someone a master versus just being on Top Chef because the talent on Top Chef has gotten so good. Yeah. Yeah. And they definitely like when they have something that's really working, Bravo kind of like squeezes all that they can out of it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm here for it, especially if it's working. But yeah, I would love to see some of these. And I, um, I was just thinking too of, I don't know if you watched Most Eligible. Um, I did, yeah. Dallas and uh I want to say her name was Kelly, but I No, you know. it was um uh, it wasn't Kelly. No, it, well, it wasn't oh. Tracy. It was cuz she had her own she wound up getting her own show. Yeah, she got her own show and it, it's going to come to me um Courtney. Courtney. Courtney does Dallas or something Courtney. was yeah. her own. Yeah. Um she I I've like heard things where it was like they should bring some of the OG Dallas housewives back and like bring Courtney into the mix because I guess she hangs out with that crew. And mm -hmm. it's like, Hey, we've got another show. Like let's, let's put these people that were good television back on our screens. Yeah. And I, I loved how they did it with Miami. Like let's like maybe just put it on Peacock, let people discover it, let it be out there and then like grow it on Peacock and then bring it over to Bravo. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Well, awesome. Well, I mean, this is always so fun. I love chatting all things Bravo and, and TV. It's it's something that my, my husband hates all these shows because he, he doesn't understand that it gives me calm when ladies fight. Mm -hmm. um, and so I always love chatting with, with other folks about it because I don't get to do it at home a lot. Um, so thank you for doing that today. Oh, well, thank you so much for uh, having me on. It's always so fun talking Bravo to someone who is very well versed in pop culture. Of course. And um, so tell everyone where they can, you know, find you and find uh, Watch What Crap Ends and then anything else that you have coming up that you want to talk about. Um, you Watch What Crap Ends is on every uh, podcast platform. Just look up Watch What Crap Ends. Uh, we're also on Instagram at Watch What Crap Ends. And on Twitter, we're at what crappens because watch what crappens is too long for twitter yeah so just at what crappens just search you'll you'll be able to find it easily i personally i'm at ben mandelker on uh instagram and on twitter i would love a follow because i recently made my very first ever influencing video and i had so much fun doing it and then i was like oh how do i do more of these and then i found out I need uh, 15,000 more followers. <laughs> okay, well, let's do I have it. to hit 50,000 followers, guys, so I could do more influencing videos. So yes. come on, help me out. <laughs> yes, absolutely. We I'm just going to shamelessly ask for them. I'm not yeah. even going to try to be clever. I'm just going to be like, can you just follow me so I can make more videos? Thanks. I mean, and that's the way to do it. Like, you know, <laughs> in all really of your fun. videos, make sure you say follow me. And, you know, people do. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a really yeah. fun thing to do. Yeah, I have to like create a social media plan for myself now. Yeah. So sad. Well, well, you're doing a great job and, you know, I will of course be following. Um, and I appreciate you coming by. Hopefully we'll get to do this again, chat all the things when all, when all these shows have kind of come and gone and we're going into our next eras, we'd love to get your thoughts more again. So um, absolutely. Ben, yeah. And Ben, thank you for, for being on the just today and, um, for all of you out there listening, thank you for listening. Definitely go, go follow Ben first and foremost, but also of course, go check out the podcast, watch what crap ends. It's so funny. And if you enjoy it, if you've made it this far in this episode, you're going to love that one a million times more. So go, go check that out. Um, and yeah, until next time it's Chris Vetrano. Bye.